Oh, it is a new dawn and it is, uh, it's an evening. It is definitely an evening. And oh wait, newsflash, here's Tom from last night, dead as a doorknob. Oh my goodness me, what an incredible night. Like, a get together of just some fireworks with such good people, such good vibes, and it was absolutely amazing. My neighbors came over again, the neighbors on the road came over again. It was honestly, just a, a cracking night, a testament to how amazing our friends and family and all that sort of stuff is. And again, I have to give massive thank you, a massive prop to my mum. Like, I feel like I'm doing a speech here. Uh, to my mum, because after the party, which was an absolute state, she completely nuked the house of all like, the bottles and everything like that, and it looks so goddamn clean. Now after a quick Tesco run for supplies to survive, I, I don't know why I brought sushi, but sushi, like a protein drink, or like healthy drinks and waters, and vitamin drinks to like get me back on track. I ended up finding my top hat and I tried to return it to the shop today, but they're already closed, so that's a bit unfortunate, I couldn't do that. Um, we're home sweet home, and uh, you know I said the house is tidy? Well, it's tidy, but it's just a little bit... It's just a little bit ruined. The floor is back to its state of being sticky. Ryan's at the edit. How are you doing, mate? <laughs> He's been in his little station with his little food and all that. Where's Ben Jemima? Is he in the lounge? <gasps> is he asleep? Sorry. I thought I'd get it. Wait, is someone in the garage? No, Jess is back upstairs. All oh, right, okay, Jess is back upstairs. But wait, if we creep into here. <gasps> oh no, no, Ben Jemima. It's okay. Oh. Are you sleeping? He's okay. Oh, he's okay. It's okay. Benjamin, it's okay. I've just lost your dummy. Where's it gone? I don't know. It fell. It fell. I have no idea where it's gone. I swear I had it a second ago. It just fell and rolled away. I know. I don't know. I swear I had it a second ago. Yeah, I did. I did. I did actually have it. <laughs> Cry, crying babies do not bother me in the slightest. My mum used to be a childminder, so I'm just so used to it. Benjamin, I swear it used to be here, mate, and I don't know where it is. By the way, are you guys liking this impressive skill of one hand? Oh, really? You guys drunk? One-handed baby hold. Supporting the head, supporting the baby, and I found your dummy. And I think... Okay. I thought it was him listening to the vlog. I didn't think you were back. Oh, no, he's here. Oh, go on. Come on. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Uncle Tom coming in, saving the day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do it. Look at him, nice and chill, mega. <laughs> oh dear, this is, this is me and Orion behind the scenes, proving that this is how we can't edit the vlogs. When we go to all length, literally, I'm sat here, <laughs> remote desktop, like trying to, to do it on my computer. <laughs> and then my absolute beast of a computer, which is just a wizard beast, also struggles with it. This is mad. The behind the scenes that you guys don't see of the vlogs. Look, it's even making me grow a beard. <laughs> oh, baby hair gel for it. He doesn't need it. No. Oh, big Chris, you're gonna be melting all the women's hearts in my vlog. <laughs> like, look, look at him. The muscles, the size of the bed. Like, so, like he's got babies in his arms. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 What's he doing? Oh my god. I'm sorry, all I've done the past two days is film this baby, but look at him. So cute. Thanks for coming. Thanks for hitting my house with your car. <laughs> Do you want to see where he hit my house? Oh wait, I'm going to have to open the gates again. Look, he scraped all the back end of his car. <laughs> Whoa, I was going to say, who's got. Jeez. Oh my god, he's playing the violin. Bloody hell. Godspeed. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> he crashed into the side of my house, the tit. All right, this is a bit of a weird transition, but because this vlog has been really short today and I've been meaning to do it for an actual minute, I'm gonna do a bit of a Q and A thingness. Now I'm hoping that filming like this isn't weird because this is me filming with my iPad and I'm reading the questions off my phone. So I'm gonna be screenshotting them. Ryan's gonna be putting the, 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 the tweets on screen here like this. This is the first question from Reese. Boom, who said, <laughs> why did you open the champagne bottle? Now I'm gonna say this right now. I'm not telling you. But I might tell you, in June 2020, you might be like, what on earth is going on in June 2020? And if you don't understand the context, 
Downstairs, I've got a bottle of champagne that I had for like maybe three, four years, and I said I was going to open it of one of two reasons. One of the reasons, which I'll happily say right now, uh, was whether or not Alice and Kyle did announce that they were having a baby. And you might be like, oh, do the math, do the math, is that like nine months away till then? Let me just spoil it right now. Alice and Kyle are not having a baby, so it's the other reason. Now, I can't tell you what the other reason is. There's a massive popular thing going around, and I saw it on Reddit and stuff like this, which was, did Syndicate Original hit a million pound in sales or something like that? And that's why we opened it. And the answer is, that is not the reason either. It's a really, really awesome big reason, but I'm not telling you yet just for reasons. Like, I don't know, it's not even like legal reasons. It's just like, it's just reasons. So I can't tell you why, but I can tell you that I might be able to tell you June 2020. So uh, yeah. The next question is coming from Jack, who said, what's the most memorable place you've been? And I'm gonna have to hands down say, it was the Cayman Islands. The Cayman Islands were incredible. I was in Chicago. It was snowing sideways and I was supposed to be there for two weeks, hanging out with like the optic guys, Lex and all that. And I was like, as much as I love these people here, it's, it's snowing sideways. Do not appreciate this in the slightest. So I decided to go to an Oakley store, buy a, I said, bought a suitcase. I said, if I buy the suitcase, where should I go? And someone was like, Cayman Island. I looked at flights to the Cayman Islands. It was like $200, flew there, and I was there for 10 days and had one of the best trips of my life. I met Ron, uh, the guy who gave me the watch. I met so many other pe uh, like amazing people there, and it was just spectacular. That was my favorite ever place, like most memorable place I've ever been until I've just been to Iceland and Iceland was out of this world. Like it was so damn good that it was just amazing. And by the way, I'm just throwing this out here as a disclaimer. The reason why I look dead oily and sweaty and sticky is uh, in tomorrow's vlog, I went and got a spa massage and that, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm a bit oily and a bit nasty, so uh, sorry about that. This is a really good question from Lewis. He said, what is the hardest challenge you face since starting YouTube? Now for this, you could say like, trying to get followers, trying to views and stuff like that, because that's always a difficult thing, but the one thing a lot of people don't understand is that like, I've been doing this for a long time and a lot of people don't have that mindset to be like, what am I going to do after YouTube or something like that? And that's something that every YouTuber will be battle or like, you know, having a sense of purpose of like, you know, what to do next or what should I do about this or what should I do about this in, uh, in this future? And the thing is, if you ever get into YouTube, you need to understand that you should do it for fun and as a hobby. A lot of people like quit the full-time jobs and like disregard their family and friends and all that to be like, I'm going to be the biggest YouTuber ever. And then it doesn't pan out. And then they're like, ah, what am I going to do? Or it does become successful for a short period of time. And I've been fortunate enough for it to last nine years rather than just a year and then it dies out. But a lot of people don't have like a backup plan. And the hardest challenge for me is when I did it, went off and did it for a year, I was like, oh man, what happens if you're like, it's, it's over. You, you need to have contingency plans. And the hardest thing was, you know, coming to terms with having a contingency plan or not. That, that honestly was the most difficult thing. Like if YouTube disappeared tomorrow, like what would I do? I'd have to go back to university, to college or something like that. And luckily I managed to be smart with my finances, my investments for the future and all that sort of stuff to be able to be like, if I quit YouTube now, I, I don't have to go to like university or anything like that. I'm set, I'm like literally, I'm, I'm in a position where I'm set up for the future. And that was the hardest challenge I faced getting from A, to like be where I am now to being set up for that future because it can be very difficult. There are very many points throughout my nine years doing YouTube where there was talks like you won't be able to post gaming videos on YouTube anymore because it's going to get copyrighted. Like they're taking away monetization. You won't be able to make a living off it, all that sort of stuff. So it's all about having a backup plan for the future. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. And a lot of people do it. And hopefully me telling you this, if you do try and do this or any career, think about it. Say like you're gonna be a professional footballer. You put all your time and energy into be a professional footballer, but then you break a leg and you can never play football ever again. Like it's done on you, like you're paralyzed. Like you've gotta you've gotta have multiple like lanes in life to be able to go down, multiple avenues and stuff like that. So um yeah, contingency plans are key. This is like a really like silly question, but Captain obvious said how would you explain your youtube journey in just four words absolutely amazing full stop i don't know i know that's not a word but that's what i'd say absolutely effing amazing uh, it's just been such an amazing journey and to think that i actually even managed to turn it into a job blows my mind Steven in here with a random Call of Duty question saying, what's your favorite gun on the new COD? Ha ha ha. Uh, I'd have to say, I think like the Kark. Uh, no, it's not, it's not a Kark. The Car 
98 k is that what it is or something like that? The car, like, some, yeah, the car, it's a marksman rifle, it's a sniper rifle from like World of War. It was an amazing gun to use. It gets hit markers for days, but I just think it's so satisfyingly fun to use and the sound of it's incredible. So as much as you think I'm gonna say the shotgun or the M4 or something like that, uh, I'd say the car. Oh, I knew this one was gonna be coming. This is from Nevsky who said, KSI or Logan, Gib or Jake? I'm gonna throw this out here. I feel like Logan and Gib are in the same mentality of just running all guns blazing and F it up. Uh, so I'm gonna say for the KSI Logan fight, I've already announced this and made it very public. Uh, Logan's gonna take it in the first round. And if he doesn't, JJ's gonna win it in the fifth. That's just what I think. Logan's gonna tire out. He's so big that he'll just tire out, wear himself out, and he'll be screwed. And with Gib and Jake, I think Jake will just tire out anyway, like he did last time with uh, with Deji, even though he won. Uh, and I think Gib would take it in the first. Well, no, Gib would take it in the second, and then Gib will probably tire out as well. So yeah, I'd say I'd say that's a pretty fair sort of guesstimation. This is a, a pretty deep one from Cuba, who says, how do you become successful in life? Now, I feel like you need to manage your expectations of what successful is and what being successful means to you. Being successful for me was, I wanted to be a YouTuber. It was like my number one dream and everything. And I didn't stop at nothing to achieve that. I made like probably five other YouTube channels before I got to this point. Uh, and it was like, you get knocked down, got knocked down, copyright strikes on videos, channels got banned and deleted and stuff like this. And it was just like, it's never gonna happen. But I just enjoyed it so much that even if it didn't happen, I was enjoying getting from A to B. I was enjoying the journey. And then the fact that I actually made it and you know, like had the opportunity to have my dream job, it was like the best thing ever. So it's like when I say, how do you become successful in life? It's set yourself a goal, set yourself a target, and work towards it. Give it your everything. Like I said before, don't put all your eggs into one basket, but success can be quantified in, in any means of ways. But for me, success is like not achieving that final thing. That's like the nice payoff, but the being successful is managed to get in from A to B. It's like, it's, it's, the, it's the journey, not the destination. So yeah, set yourself a target, hustle towards it, and uh, you never know, everything in life can just be great. Kyle coming in here saying, where are you planning to go in the future? Now, I feel like my number one destination of where I want to go as of right now, like my number one place I want to go in the world is Hawaii. And I want to get some, I want to get a cameraman to produce it as a main channel video, or like offer this channel or something like that, where I just go, do you know what? Today, I'm going to fly to Hawaii and poke lava with a stick. And you might be like, what? And then just be like a dead random, like three minute video or something. Get up, fly to Hawaii, like straight off the plane, poke the lava with a stick, and then you know it looks like, and then get up, get up, go and get on the plane and fly back. Like it happened all within the same like like you know time schedule. But in reality, the way it works out is I go to Hawaii, full adventure there, like week, ten days, two weeks or something like that. Just have an amazing time. But whilst I'm doing that, put together that one off piece of content, which is. I went, do you know what? I feel like flying to Hawaii today and poking lava with a stick. <laughs> like back. That was the sound effect of flying there, poking the lava and flying back. That's something I want to do. So I think Hawaii is my number one destination where I want to go next. But then I still really, really want to do Australia. And I really, really want to kick it with the Raka Raka guys. Because I just think they're amazing. And I'd love to produce like a, I, I, someone messaged me before about like, if you were to do a collab with anyone, who would you want to do it with? And I think it'd be the Raka Raka guys. I just think it'd be really cool to incorporate some little piece of content with them in the vlog. Not like a one-off piece, but just, you know, something in the video. I think that'd be dope. Is it interest one? Uh, in interest. <laughs> We're gonna make financial money off this. Uh, Kate James said, "If you had to be in employed work, what job would you like to do?" Oh my God, Kate James. Do you know what I'd actually like to do? And this is gonna sound a bit weird, but I just actually bumped into someone today who's talking to me about their son being a police officer. Like, I hate thieves. I, I I hate thieves. I hate the fact that people think they have the right to take things from other people. Like in my area, you know, I call it gyrac. There's people robbing cars left, right, and centre houses and stuff like that. And, you know, like, if I just try to stop someone now being, you know, they call it literally being a vigilante. If you were going to go being a vigilante and stuff like that, trying to stop them, you'd get in trouble. You'd be the one who gets in trouble. So you have to do it the legal way, which is to train to be a police officer. I actually, when I was 16, really wanted to go and be in the army. Like, that's, and it is the case of being inspired from video games, but then it's like, it's not the same. And like, I understand that. I had a lot of family who were, you know, sorry, something popped up on my iPad. And I have a lot of family who were in the army and stuff like that. And it just, it always appealed to me so much. And the thing was, I like, I wanted to train to be a marksman. I know it sounds crazy, but I, I wanted to be uh, like a sniper on the field. But, can't be a sniper on the field if you haven't got perfect vision. So just because that was thrown out the window, I was like, sack that, whatever. I did also actually want to be an architect as well, but then I realized I couldn't draw. So, you know, like just bumping into these chaos things. But if you had to be in any, only in any employed work, what would it be? I'd probably say, yeah, policeman 
or uh, this is a dead random one, complete contrast, uh, the, the, I'd, I'd be the organizer at a paintball arena. I know that's so randomly dumb, but then I could just shoot people all day with a paintball gun and it'd be great. Ooh, Will Taylor coming in with, what influences you to make videos? Now, you guys know, I've taken time off of the vlogs, like video games or whatever, where I simply don't vlog. And honest to God, I so get left without not having a purpose. Like I've got a million other things going on, like Cynic Original, things off in America and all this. And it's just like, vlogging is something I love and enjoy so much. I don't have to do it. I, 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 could, I could quit YouTube now forever and just be like, you know, tick on every day going, hmm, what do I fancy doing today? Hmm, nothing, just chill out. Or I fancy going away here and go and do that and not filming it. But I did that for like, what, is it two month period? A month, two month period or something like that last time, just before Christmas last year. And I tell you something, I just missed it. I enjoy it so much. Being able to, like, be, being able to just like get up and share whatever my day is, whether I'm filming a Q&A or I'm going off doing this, I'm going off doing that, or, you know, like, I'm getting email, literally emails through now on my phone saying, like, I'm, like, I think on the 11th, I'm going doing, like, a make a wish. Like, the fact, the fact that people can watch my content of me just sharing my life and sharing my day-to-day -day shenanigans of me maybe doing nothing or doing everything, like, skydiving this and everything, but it can have an impact on someone's life. Do you know, do you know how amazing that, that, thought is to be able to say I can share my life which I don't have to do in the slightest but then it can have a positive effect on someone else like if someone's feeling down you know and I, and I can help raise the spirits it just it makes it it's the most incredible feeling ever and I don't know how to to put that across and a lot of people say to me like Tom you know like is your happiness actual real and stuff like that because you know maybe it's a bit fake and you put it on from the camera and it's like no if you know me and this is why like, everyone like I fair to say anyone knows me and I was like nope it's genuinely Tom it is. And I have people who will meet me and be like, mm, you know, I'm, I'm a bit standoffish with you because I think it's all like a, a facade and fake and it's not. And one of the biggest reasons why I've never ever wanted to be something I'm not on camera that I am like in real life sort of thing is when I used to live with my old roommate Tucker, he goes by the name Jericho. So like how I got Tom, you know, known as Syndicate. He was there and he was like, ah, like screaming, shouting, doing it. And then as soon as he stopped streaming, he just went, ah. Thank God I don't have to be Jericho anymore. And I just looked at him and was like, damn, that is just an awful way to approach doing it. But it's like, that's the thing. It's like, you've got a character like, say, Dr. Disrespect. You know, he's got a character and all this, whereas I've always wanted to just be me. I can be the most energetic in the world uh, and I can have days where I'm like a bit quiet or I'm a bit down or whatever. Like I'm just a normal person. But if there's anything negative that ever happens in life, I feel like there's always a positive way to approach it. Like... I forgot to say, like, my granddad got cancer, like, bowel cancer. And as much as it is, like, it's absolutely devastating, it's like, we can beat this. We are a team. We can do this together. Like, it, you know, you said it's not, the, it's not the end of the world, but, like, in the same boat, my grandma got motor neuron disease, which is, you've got two years to live and you're going to die. And it's like, she's got two years to live and she's going to die, and there's nothing you can do about it. So let's make it, like, the best two years possible. Every time you're with her, make her just, like, smile and laugh in the most positive she could ever be. There's always a different way you can approach a situation to make it have a positive outcome. And that's why I just don't do drama. I can't be bothered with it. When it's, like, you know, near me in my life, I'm just like, hell no, get away from me. Like, ain't nobody got time for that. And sometimes in life, you can't get away from it. So you do have to deal with it head on. But just the way I try to approach things and deal with it, you know... It comes across like that, so it, 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 it's just, it's nice to have a positive outlook on life, and I know not everyone's like that, and I know it's just, you know, some people's minds are wired differently, but, you know, when I've got such an amazing audience that I meet around the world, to be able to have them just feed me positive energy as well, it just, it's an ongoing thing, like, I feed you the energy, you feed it me back, and that sort of thing, and it's just incredible, so, what influences me to make videos, you guys, and just your amazing, like, feedback for watching, so... Thank you. All right, I got a message from Reese who said, will you ever go back to posting daily on the Syndicate channel? Now, as much as I would love to say, yeah, potentially one day, I think I'm just past that part in my life. I like posting to it when I want to post to it, whether it's, uh, you know, say I'm recording a series like the Hunting Optic, like 100 Thieves was. Like, it was fun because I knew there was going to be content on the reg, and it was just, it was like fun and exciting and new to me. Whereas, like, if I was forcing myself to post content on that channel every day, like, mate, it would be so depressing. That's when I was talking about, like, Jericho before, you know, going, oh, thank God I don't have Jericho anymore. I, be, I feel like I'd, I'd push myself to a point where I'm like, oh, I have to make videos and I don't want to do it. And it's like, well, no, this is my job sort of thing, but like, I don't have to do it. I do it because I enjoy it and I have fun. And I feel like if there was ever a point in my life where I was making content that I, when like, because I did, and I didn't want to, 
you guys would tell more than anything and you wouldn't enjoy it, therefore like, I wouldn't enjoy it. So uh, would I ever go back to posting daily on the Syndicate channel? Probably not. Do you know, this is a bit of a weird one from Andrew, but a lot of people ask it me quite a lot, like, why don't you use an Android? Like, you know, because I film with my iPhone on daily. Uh, a lot of people say to me, like, Tom, why don't you use Android? There's better cameras out there, better phones, blah, 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 everything. And let me just, let me explain to you right now why I don't. First of all, the key thing is all my family and pretty much all my friends all have iPhones. So for iMessage, group FaceTime, all that sort of stuff, it's convenient as hell. You could say use WhatsApp, but I really don't use WhatsApp. I just prefer iMessage and that's the, just a reason for me, okay? But for filming and stuff like that on Android, there's a massive, massive flaw. So when I'm filming with my iPhone, right, I can film, 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 film. This is a whiteboard marker. But when I click record, okay, it instantly starts recording. And when I click stop, it instantly stops and is immediately ready for me to film the next clip. If I was filming on an Android and I daily vlog and film everything on my phone, if I click record, you have to wait. And this is like nearly on all the new models of all the new phones I've already checked. When you click record, it's like, now I'm ready to start recording. So you miss that immediate thing you want to get captured. And then when you stop, it then goes, and now I've stopped recording, you can record your next clip. This thing is just so fast and it's so on point for like capturing the moment that it just works for me. And I'm sure they may put out new phones, which gets over that problem and stuff like that. But personally, in experience, this just works better for me. And the number one reason is obviously again, because all my friends and family on it, it's just more convenient for me. I do not care if someone prefers Samsung over Apple or this over Apple or that over Apple. I do not care if someone doesn't like Apple. You're each to your goddamn own. I just simply don't care. This is what I like, that is what you like, and that is that. <laughs> I think this is going to be my last question for me to answer, but it's a little bit of a weird subject that I've, I've kind of not really touched on all that much, and it might uh, teach you something about me. So Joshua said, how do you cope with anxiety and depression? Now, I have been to the lowest of lows, whether it's through families passing away, life drama, all this sort of stuff, you know. Life can be a really situation but the one thing I always like learn to deal with it is it always gets better and even if it keeps getting worse and keeps getting worse and keeps getting worse it can always get better it just can and you might be like but Tom you haven't been through this like I have been through a lot and there's a lot of the stuff that you guys don't know about in these vlogs and stuff like that and you know it, it, it's obviously an each by each case basis but when I, the way I deal with it which is what I'm being asked is I just know it's always going to get better and I, and, I, and I use an example of like a hangover. I know it's so stupid, but you feel like the worst thing in the world. And it's not depression. It's just an example of how to get over something. You're like, it's the worst feeling in the world. I can't go on like this. But then you're like, well, tomorrow I'll feel better. So there you go. It, it's a silly way of an example of it. But the way I deal with like depression is, and I, I don't know whether depression is the right word. Like you saw me the other day when I got back from Iceland and I was like, I'm just, I'm just stuck back here, you know, being in this place, like, why am I here? Like, when every day I was waking up in Iceland, it was the most magical thing, and I was just taking on board so much new information, and it was just so visually stimulating, it was just incredible. The thing is, it's like, you know, I knew I was in a bit of a rook, so I went from such a high of a high to kind of a low of a low, but I was like, eh, it's always going to get better, I just need to just give it time, and uh, time heals all in that regard. But this is why this question was interesting to me, it says, like, how do you cope with anxiety? Now you might be like, Tom, you don't have anxiety and stuff like that. And the thing is, I actually never thought I would have anxiety or anything like that. I'm a pretty confident person. Uh, I, I mentally can put my mind to like anything. Like, I want to do something, I can do it. Like, even if it's, I'm going to be embarrassed, I can fail at something. Don't care, I'm going to put my mind to it. I'll do it, I'll achieve it. Like, even like, you know, ghost chili pepper, for example. You'll be like, ooh, a bit anxious to get it. But it's like, no, 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 no. That's like not full anxiety. I actually get really bad anxiety to a degree in certain circumstances. I don't know what switches it on. I don't know I don't know what switches it off. But I get really bad anxiety when I'm about to go up on stage. Now, if I was in the moment and, and I'm like, yeah, 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 just like having a great day and there's a massive stage for a thousand people, I could jump up on them straight away and be like, whoa, yeah, talking like, you know, having a good laugh and like, you know, sort of being like performing on stage. Like, I'd be fine. I'd be absolutely fine. But if there's a build up for something, like... Tomorrow, 6 p.m., you're going to go on stage. The build-up, the hype, the 6 p.m., you're going to be on stage. Are you ready yet? Are you ready for it yet? The build-up, the build-up. I'm like, oh, God, yeah, like, I, I, was, I was ready for it, but now you're freaking me out. Like, what's going on? But, like, it's not me. Mentally, I'm like, I could do this. But my body does this weird thing where I'm like, I feel like I'm going to be sick in the back of my throat and there's nothing I can do about it. It's like I'm drinking water, but then I'm drinking water and I'm like, 
I feel like I'm going to throw up the water. And I know it's like a really weird thing because I mentally don't care about it. It's just the way my body's reacting. And there's not much I can do about it. And over the years, I noticed it when I was first ever a little kid. I was like, I think I was about maybe 10. And I was going to go up on stage and do my role as the fairy godmother. Like when I was in primary school, I was going to be the fairy godmother on stage performing. And just before it, like all the rehearsals, I was fine. And on the big day, when I went up to go and do my big part, before it, I was like, I feel like I'm going to be sick. Like, I just didn't understand it. And as the years went on, like anxiety before like doing a swimming race because I was like a, a really good swimmer I was like as I was about to swim before it I was like oh mate I feel like I'm gonna throw up like I don't understand it like what is going on like literally forcing myself to throw up to feel better and that's kind of a way I got over it I know it sounds disgusting but like forcing myself to throw up like cleared that anxiety away and I was like right let's do it because I'm like if this is a crutch that's holding me back like needing to throw up then I'd be like Bleh, get rid of it I'm good. And it was honestly a way for years I dealt with it. But then building up to things a bit more, I started to develop like little breathing techniques, like like full breathing, not eating like sweet, sugary things before I went up on stage, making sure I was only drinking water the next day. You know, only little amounts, like clearing out my throat, like, like any phlegm or saliva in the back of my throat, spitting it out. You might be like, this is really weird, but it's just a way I learned to adapt it. You've got to, you've got to not hide from these things, but hit them head on. And I say to people, like, if I'm ever in a conversation with you like that, and for some reason I get this like little, I think it's like an acid reflux in the back of my throat when I'm about to be on stage or I'm talking to an interview, I give them a heads up, like, this can happen. Just like distract the conversation from me. I'll clear it out and I'll be fine. And I'm not going to like throw up in front of them, but it's like a really, really weird thing that I've just had my entire life. And for the longest time, I never thought, what could it be? And then it, like when I spoke to people, like, yeah, it's almost like a little miniature anxiety attack. And it's weird because I'm a very confident person and mentally, I don't care that there's all these people here. I can stand in front of them and talk to them all day, but my body is kind of different. So yeah, a bit of a weird one there, but I've never spoken to anyone about that before in my life. But yeah, I just learned to deal with it a bit. And sometimes it still happens. Like 100%, I can be in front of like a big crowd of people and all of a sudden it just, it just clicks on. I'm like, ah, no, I was I was perfectly fine, but now it, 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 it's, 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 it's back. I don't like it. Uh, but yeah, it's just the way I kind of deal with like being on stage and in front of people and everything. And uh yeah, a bit weird. Uh, never really spoke to anyone about that before. But guys, I'm going to use that now as like my final uh, final question there from Joshua. So thank you very much for that. Bit of a weird one. Hopefully like a bit of an insight to certain things in my life and uh, all that sort of stuff. Obviously, I did do this because uh, the vlog was like only like four minutes long or something. Uh, and if you did like it, like a little bit of a QA, and a then uh, make sure you leave a like rating. And if I do have short vlogs again, you know, I did say I was going to do this because, it, you know, it, when I say like, oh, if I don't have enough content, I'd rather not post a vlog. I'd rather just leave it, uh, wait till the next day and be back on track with a normal vlog but sometimes i do actually genuinely just lie down sitting with you guys because it's not it's not every day this this sort of thing happens and no i'm not having a little anxiety attack there i'm just burping sorry i got hiccups kind of thing but yeah it's weird I, it's nice it's nice to let people know like about me personally because it's like you see the everyday tom and everyday tom is legit just me it, like that's a fact but then there's you know there is always the behind the scenes that you don't know about or you would never know unless you asked and uh, the thing is uh, most of the time i'm always willing to willing to answer so yeah, there you go. Apart from, you know, obviously, how did I open the bottle of champagne? So, boom, you'll find out maybe in June. But, guys, I'm going to go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if any of these answers sort of helped with you or anything you're going through in life, just forget. Uh, just forget. Don't forget. It's always okay to talk to people. It's it, One of the best things is it's it's good to get it off your chest, whether you are in a, in a dark spot in life or, you know, if you are, like, the most positive person in the world or anything like that. Sometimes, you know, you might be like, oh, I don't need to speak to one. I can get through it by myself. And the answer is, yeah, you probably can. But, you know, it is always good to speak to other people to, like, just help clear your mind and offload all this, like, weight you have on your shoulders about life or about anything. So, yeah, you know, just if you ever ever need someone to speak to, you know, I'm not saying, like, I'm going to be here, like, every day, like, able to talk to you. But, like, you never know if, like, you leave a comment down in the comments. Like, I know how amazing this community is. Someone might have advice on, you know, how to deal with, like, sort of anxiety or certain this or certain that or anything. Like, this community is incredible. And I can't thank you enough for uh, all taking part in watching my life and being just an amazing person or persons watching this i don't know if you're watching this in your lounge with your family if you are i love you um so yeah that sort of thing so i just know i see photos of people like watching this on like the tv with like the whole family and like the baby just sat there watching it and even the dog's like what the hell is this guy talking about but if you are watching it i do really appreciate all the uh all the love and support you guys have shown me over the years and uh, here's to some more years. You never know. So yeah, I'm going to go. Thanks for watching. Make sure you leave a like, rain, subscribe, share the videos with your friends. I'll see you guys next time at 7pm for the next live vlog. Sadios. <laughs>